Now, last week, we heard how production of the Ford Fiesta is stopping to make way for electric models, with sales of new petrol and diesel cars coming to an end in the UK by 2030. Yeah, there's one country, though, that looks set to meet that same target five years earlier. It's Norway. Believe it or not, some claim its move to electric vehicles was kick-started by the 80s pop group AHA. Uh -huh. <laughs> the ban carried out a number of protests and a campaign of civil disobedience 33 years ago in a bid to get their government to take the issue seriously. 33, 33 years, years ago, ago. is a long time. Oh, well, our reporter Kevin Keane went to Oslo to find out how it all happened. As the lead singer of AHA, Morten Harkit was using his platform to raise awareness about the environment. And in 1989, this unlikely grouping of two pop stars, an environmentalist and an academic, imported Norway's first modern-day electric car, a Fiat Panda, which they used for civil disobedience. We've brought them back together to recreate that photo. Now the question is, can we all go down on our knees? Yeah. Oh, did we do that as well? And they're using a modern-day electric Fiat. 33 years on, we want it exact. Like that, yeah. So big smiles all round. <laughs> they racked up fines which they refused to pay until the car was impounded. Did you feel like you were a rebel? I didn't feel I was entering into the role of a rebel, really. I, I, I realised that that's what it was, but... It was just necessary, it was what we needed to do, and it made, just made every sense, you know. The original car was repeatedly bought back and more fines accrued, with an aim of embarrassing the government into taking electric vehicles seriously. Uh, the car was a symbolic thing, right? So, because okay. there was only two seats and you guys drove it, and obviously with Morton there, it created also press, you know, it became visible. So it wasn't about necessarily embarrassing the government. It was more about getting focus on yeah. this as a potential future uh, game changer. But it went 45 kilometers, so it was not... It was <laughs> in the early days. And then had to charge for 48 hours, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so you then collectively imported the first one into Norway. What was that like receiving that and, and actually having that on Norway's roads? Well, the government tried to put all kinds of different attempts at taxing it, which we refused because it was just rubbish. It was a diesel tax. It took, took a year to pave the road and with this little Fiat Panda for the regulations in Norway. But it's interesting how now, 33 years later, we are the grown-ups and we have kids, all of us, and we have a responsibility uh, to our own families and to our own uh, nation and to, to the global community. The campaign was conceived by Professor Rostvik, who'd been frustrated that electric vehicles weren't being taken seriously. Today, it's a different story. The last six months, meaning 2022, 78% of all sold cars are pure electric. So. Pretty soon uh, there will be 100% and from 2025 the government has announced they will ban the sales of all petrol and diesel cars. Norway today is a different place with electric infrastructure much more commonplace than in the UK. Morten, how optimistic are you about the future? I am in, in, with the thought that the world only looks the way it does today because we keep it that way, because the upkeep of, every, of how we do things, how we go about things. It can change very fast mm. if we choose to change. There's little doubt Norway will meet its target of banning new fossil fuel cars in a couple of years. With electric ferries now entering service, they've already moved on to their next climate challenge, decarbonising the rest of their transport infrastructure. You have that song in your head all day. We're really, really sorry. I'm not sorry. It's a great song. It's a great song. Brilliant video. But it will be in your head all day. Yeah. And yeah. disclosure, electric cars ready for the change. The charge, even, is available. Uh, very good. <laughs> is on BBC iPlayer and BBC One Scotland tonight at 8 o'clock.